All right, welcome back. If you're here, it's because you wanted to learn how to install Azure DevOps Agent. Apologies in advance if I speak very quickly. It's a relatively simple topic, but there are a couple of things to cover for someone who's a brand newbie um, that might be useful. So I'm gonna to try to talk quickly as possible to not waste your time. Last thing before we start, all important uh, timestamps and, and links and details will be inside the video description. If there's any links to GitHub, uh, any scripts, they'll also be inside the video description. So please go ahead and check it. So before we go any further, I just want to cover what this video covers very quickly, which is uh, number one, we're going to show you how to create an agent pool. Number two, install the agent pool. Number three, discuss the agent pool installation prompt settings. Uh, that'll make more sense later. And then number four, how to check your services and change the authentication of who's running the service. Okay, so let's get started by understanding where to go. You can go to project settings. You can go to agent pools over here and you see that we have two default, Azure, Azure Pipelines, which is usually Azure hosted, and then a default, which is um, you know self-hosted. And for the uninitiated, uh, essentially Azure hosted means that it's exactly what it sounds like, it's Microsoft hosted. Uh, build agents self-hosted is um, agents that you are in control of and that you can install the agent on a VM, whether it be local, on-prem, or a Azure VM or Azure uh, VMSS. In the context of this video, we're just going to cover how to install an Azure agent on a Azure VM. Okay, if you're curious on how to create a brand new agent pool, you can click on add pool over here. You can click on um, self-hosted because again, we're just doing an Azure VM here. And here we're going to call uh, Azure VM test. Uh, I would hit grant access permission to all pipelines. So you have no less issues moving forward. And there you go. You have another agent pool to work with. Okay, so as far as installing the Azure agent, all we have to do is click on the agent pool that you want. You can go to new agent over here and you see that Microsoft already gives you both the uh, link to the zip file for downloading the agent, um, as well as some PowerShell snippet over here to create a directory, go inside the directory, and then actually um, unpack the download file from over here. Uh, and then finally run this dot slash config dot command to actually configure the agent. One more thing to note is that they give you uh, two options over here based on 6432, um, as well as the fact that you can run this on a Mac OS or Linux as well. Uh, in this video, we're just going to do Windows, but obviously the steps are all laid out here anyways, and more or less it's the same as well as the fact um, that once you run dot config dot command, uh, the prompts that are given will be essentially the same as well too. Okay, so before we go into installing the agent, I just want to cover two things. First is important details, which is number one, your VM or whatever machine that you're trying to install the agents into can have multiple agents running in parallel. Number two, you can install uh, against a proxy. Um, some of you may be working and trying to install this and you may be getting some issues with connectivity due to your company's proxy. There is a command to run against, uh, to work around your proxy or work in tandem with it so that you can still install. Um, and number three, uh, as I already stated, you can install on your local machine, on-prem, Azure VM or Azure VMSS. Okay, so one of the things that we're gonna need is a personal access token. So we can go over here, uh, click over here, go to personal access tokens. You can click on new token just for this. Uh, just for this example, I'm gonna go full access, 30 days, and we're just gonna use test user uh, token installing and there you have it you have your personal access token make sure to save this and that's all you need okay so the real last thing before we actually get to installing the agent is i'm going to give you a quick breakdown of the prompts that are going to be asked once you try to install the agent um, the first and foremost is going to be asking you for your server url um, i'm going to show you where to get that you can get that just by going over here to your Azure DevOps. If you look at over here, dev.azure.com slash codedogeyt, this is essentially your uh, URL that you want to pass through over there. Okay, so second is going to ask you, how do you want to authenticate? In this case, we're going to use a personal access token, um, which we just created. Here is a personal access token that I'm going to use. So um, here, you're just going to hit enter. And then after that, you're going to enter the personal access token. Uh, next is going to prompt you for which agent pool you want to target. So if we go back over here inside um, agent pools, you remember that we have the default Azure Pipelines Microsoft hosted agent, and they give you one default of um, 
for self-hosted. And then we created another one, Azure VM Test, which is also self-hosted. In this case, we're going to try to add the agent to this newly created agent pool. So we would pass in the Azure VM Test or whatever name that you decided to give for that example for agent pool. Uh, for agent name, is going to give you the default name of the VM in this case. Um, if you just hit enter, or you can give it a custom name. Same for the work folder. You can give a custom name, or by default, it's going to be underscore work. Um, enter run as a service agent, uh, agent as a service is going to prompt you for that. Uh, most likely you're going to want to say yes, because that means it's going to run it as a service inside your services.msc. If you're not familiar with that, I'll show you that later. Uh, next is going to prompt you to enter enable service SID type unrestricted. Long story short, it basically just means that it has less potential for hiccups and restrictions. Um, so I think this is specifically just for windows machines. So you're probably going to want to hit yes on this as well to have, uh, less, you know, issues when you're trying to run your agent. And then uh, finally, it's going to prompt you for enter the user account to use for the service. I think the default is going to be like NT network security or something like that, of which you could just hit enter to enter that value, or you can add a custom uh, user or even local system, however which way, but we'll show you how to change um, the authenticated user for the service agent as well, post installation as well. Okay, so now we're ready to download and install. So you can see I'm inside the Azure VM right now. I'm going to go inside the agent pool that I want to install the new agent on. Click on new agent. You're going to click on download. You're going to see that it downloads a zip file. And it tells you over here, go to uh, the C drive, make their agent to see the agent, right? So open up PowerShell as an admin. Make sure to go to the C drive, make their agent, see the agent. And then the next part is actually telling you right here, this snippet, <clears throat> you can copy and paste it. In my case, for whatever reason, my VM's having an issue doing copy and paste properly. So I already copied it to this text file. You run that, let it do its thing. Okay. So next thing you can do is you can go inside the C drive to make sure that the agent file has been, um, I mean, the agent directory has been, um, you know, expanded or extracted from the, the download file over here. And then we are ready to run the next step, which as you can see is running the config command. Okay. So now we just want to run uh, config command. If we run it, you see it's going to ask you to enter your server URL. In this case, I already copied it over here, so let's pass it over. It's going to ask you for authentication. We're going to press enter to use your personal access token. Here's my personal access token that was made in this video session. Pass that over. It's connecting the server. Enter the agent pool. So if you remember in the beginning, there was two options, self-hosted uh, agent pool called default, and then there was the Azure hosted. And then there's a third one that I just created right now, which is Azure VM test. Um, you can give a custom name. Otherwise, this is actually the name of the VM, Dummy Agent 2023. So I'm just going to enter and just use the default agent name. And then next, it's going to ask you for a couple other prompts that we already covered about what we want to pass. So this is the work folder. We're just going to hit the default. We want to run it as a service. Yes. Uh, we want to have that enabled. Yes. And we're just going to use the default for now, which is NT authority network service, which is fine. There you go. The agent has been installed properly. Um, enter whether to prevent service starting immediately after configuration. Uh, no, that's fine. You can always change these options anyways, inside the services.msc. Okay. So now let's verify. Let's go back to this window. If we go back to the agent pool inside Azure DevOps and we go to agent, we see that we have our dummy agent 2023 VM uh, agent and it is online. So we know for a fact it's been installed properly. Okay. So there's one more thing we can do to confirm that it's working as intended. We can go to pipelines. We have a default um, YAML file, the, the default that they give. The only difference is that we changed this from being Ubuntu latest to point to the uh, new agent pool that we've created. And if we hit run, you'll see that it's running. Um, that's a good sign, number one. And number two, this is the instance where we already ran it. We can go to job and we see the first thing that it does target the Azure VM test pool and is running on the dummy agent. So that's all we need to know to confirm that the agent isn't working as intended. 
Okay, so if you just came here to learn how to install uh, Azure DevOps agents, for all intents and purposes, you're done. Otherwise, you can stick around to cover a few things, such as how to change who's authenticated for the services. So we can start by going over here to the Windows and type in services.msc, and it will open all the services that are currently running on this VM. As you can see right over here, you see Azure Pipelines agent and then the um, dummy agent, and it's in a running state. Right, so next thing that you can do is go over here, click on properties. You can obviously change some settings here that you wish to do so. You want to go to log on here. You can type in, you know, um, uh, another credential that you want to have it run as and authenticate as. Otherwise, you can just type in uh, local, you know, have the local system run it and you can hit apply. It's going to let you know you need to restart the service. So you can just restart the service so that it reflects that. And you can already see that the logon as name has changed to local system. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is that we can have multiple or parallel um, agents installed on the same VM or target. So if we go to the agent pool that we created, we see the agent that we just installed. If we go to default and we go to agents, we see nothing there. So what we can do is go over here inside the same VM and we can create a new um, directory agent two. We'll go inside there. And if we do dir, we see that it's empty. So what we can do is come over here and just run the same exact commands. In this case, just for this example, let's just copy paste this in here. Okay. I'm just going to get this ready. So if we were to run config, Command again, it's going to give you the same prompts, obviously. So, yes, we're going to do this. We're going to use a pat token. This is the, I'm sorry, we're going to use a pat. This is the pat we're going to use. And in this case, instead of using Azure VM test, you can see that it says press enter for default. That's the same default agent pool. So, in this case, we're just going to hit enter. I don't know why it's frozen here. It's terrible. Okay, we're going to use the same name. Okay, we hit yes, yes, use the default. And there you go. So there you have it. So now if we go in the background, we see that the dummy agent is associated with this default uh, self-hosted pool now, and it was offline, but now it's online because it's completed. Okay, so the very last thing I want to show you is how to delete an agent. You can go over here inside the agent pool inside ADO. You can hit delete. You will delete the agent. And same concept for the uh, agent pool itself as well. You can just go over here and you see the delete option for deleting the uh, entire agent pool. Just a quick reminder that if you delete the agent um, the way that I just showed, you're probably still going to have to go inside the VM with the target wherever the agent was installed and go to services.msc and actually delete the service from there to make sure that all ties are totally severed. Figured I'd might as well show people how to delete these services. Um, so if we go over here and we refresh it, uh, we see the default agent and then I deleted this one so you don't see it running anymore. Um, one of the things you can do over here, since I already deleted it, go to properties, you can copy this and then open your command prompt. And you simply just type in sc delete and then the name of the uh, agent or service and you see that it's deleted. If we go back over here, refresh it, it's no longer there. So that's how you completely sever all ties and you know successfully delete end-to-end -end the agent connection. And next time, we'll make sure to show you how to install a agent pool with a virtual machine scale set, or VMSS. All right, so that pretty much covers for this video topic. Um, I guess these videos are made for anyone who's absolutely new and uh, scared of getting their feet wet on their own, so they need some guidance. Uh, so otherwise, thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful and have a good one.